Hi, my name is Paulo Cunha. I'm the developer of the standard plus shader for Unity. And in this video, I'll show you how to use the custom light maps feature. After importing the standard plus shader from the asset store, you'll see here the standard plus folder and inside of it, all the necessary files and folders for the shader to work. In this folder here, I have two scenes and I'll show you this demo scene here, the demo scene one, which is a very simple scene, just has some boxes, a sphere, and it has the Unity's standard material applied to the objects. Now, before creating the materials with the standard plus shader, it's important to notice two things. When you import the models from your 3D application, make sure you put the UVs for the light maps on the second UV channel. Depending on your 3D package, they can call it UV0 and UV1 or UV1 and UV2, but it's the second UV channel. Here in Unity, for instance, they call it uh, they call them UV and UV2. And if you come here to the Import Settings panel, there is this button here, the Generate Light Map UVs. Make sure this is set to Off, just like this. This is the default. Uh, leave this to off, otherwise Unity will override your second UV channel. So I went ahead and made some materials here for the scene. Let me assign them to the objects. The blue, the metal sphere here, the walls, and yellow. Okay, that's it. Let's create our material here. Right click, create, Material, let's name it uh, wall, green, and by default Unity will assign to it the standard shader. So if we come here to the drop down list, we will see there's another item, the standard plus, and inside of it there are all the shaders that come with a package, and we'll choose this first one here. And the difference between these two is just the PBR workflow mode. This one has the uses the metallic workflow, and the second one uses the specular workflow. Pretty much like the standard Unity when you select the shader there. As I like to work with the metallic workflow, I'm going to choose this, this first one here. Apart from the logo, you can see that everything is pretty much the same as the standard shader. The difference lies here at the bottom. You have this section, this plus light maps section, and the plus translucency. The translucency I'm going to cover on another video. Let me just change here to a green color. I'll increase the smoothness a little bit more and I'll assign a material to the wall here. Right. Now what I'll do is I'll select all the materials because uh, bear in mind that when you're going to apply the light maps you do this by material. It's, it's not a global operation when you're using Unity's own light map feature, static light map feature, where it just puts the light map to everything on the scene. Now, clicking the custom light maps here, what happens is everything turns to black. And why is that? It's because these controls here, they essentially tint your light map, so they control the color and the brightness too. So by turning this to black, you turn off the light map and you don't get confused by the other ones you might plug in here. And if you turn it to white, you can see the light map. As it doesn't have anything plugged in, the scene is just a little bit brighter. Now, you just have to drag and drop your light map. And that's it. Now you have a scene with a custom light map. And this one I chose here is just, uh, I, I baked it on, I baked it on Max with the Corona renderer. And this is just a light map of uh, skylight. So I just turned the skylight, the environment light, on, and I just baked the objects. As I said, you can turn down the brightness here, you can make it darker, and let the reflection calculate, reflection probes, or you can make it even greater than one, because these are HDR controls. And this image here is not actually, it's not even an HDR, it's a PNG file. So, but if you want more quality, more, more control, the correct brightness control, you have to make sure you, you save this, all your light maps to HDR or EXR. Of course, they occupy a large, um, they, they are larger files. Your builds 
are going to be larger, but it's not a problem for a desktop app. But for mobiles, you you have to go with JPEGs because they will be converted anyways, and you'll experience a lot of artifacts. Now, you can have just one light map for your scene, okay? Just like Unity does. When you bake your scene in Unity, it bakes one or more light maps, but that's it. There's just that lighting set up and you know that's it you can't change it but here with multiple slots you can plug in more than one light map and you can mix the lights so i'll put this light left here which is a light map i baked with just a, a an area light turned on at the left side of the screen and this one here let me turn this on this one here is a light map I baked with just a, an area light at the right side of the screen. Turn it on. And now you see you have actually three light maps being mixed. And I'll turn down the skylight. And look, it's a completely different setup, uh, different mood. It's now it's kind of a, a nighttime scene, an interior scene. Let me just turn on these quads. Just a just to represent, they're just little quads with an unlit shader to them, but just to represent, they are there are some lights in here, and you see. And if you want, you can change the color of the light. For instance, let's set this to this one here to blue. And it's very important that when you bake your lights, please bake them with the light set to white. Do not bake the lights with with some color because you can you can set the color here so if you bake them to white you can put uh, you can change them to whatever color you want now with the standard plus shader you're not stuck with using just your custom light maps you can also add unity's light as well so if you turn on here a directional light like this one here like a sun you see that the material has received the light the shadows pretty much like any other uh, standard material. I haven't talked about it, but you see the reflections too, just like any other material. And more than that, if you come here to the lighting tab and you click this real-time global illumination and the auto-generate on, you can see that the real-time global illumination works as well. So this is on top of your custom light maps. You can see the light bouncing here off of the, the ceiling, you can see the red there, you see? This is from the Unity real-time uh, GI engine, which is really good. So you can mix them. You can mix your external lighting with Unity's lighting here. Now, what if you want to have your character, uh, a dynamic object, receive light from your external light maps? So, well, there's, there's no magic here because your custom light maps are just textures. So Unity has no way to know where the lights are coming from. So what you have to do is uh, you have to create some lights here to mimic the lighting you've set up on your 3D package. There's no shortcut to this. I created here two point lights. You don't need to be super precise here. I just put them uh, roughly at the same position as I put my area lights. And one thing, it's important that they are set to baked because the rule is every light here that is set to real time, they will light your light maps too. So if you don't want these lights to influence your light maps, you just have to put them to baked. This way they will only cast light on the dynamic objects via the light probe group. Okay, let's create a sphere. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Place it in here. And I'm gonna create a light probe group. Here from the top view. I'll adjust them. Now what I have to do is simply click on Baked Global Illumination. It will calculate, and that's it. You can see the sphere is now gathering light from the light probes as it is being lit by your lights here from the ceiling. And there is, as the point lights are set to Baked, there is no light being calculated here in real time. It's not adding up to the computation, and you can see you only have just a few draw calls here.
And one, one important thing, when you come here to the lighting tab, you see that if I turn this off and I let this real-time global illumination on, you see that my point lights, even though they are baked, they are lighting my scene. Why? Even it tells you. Light mode is currently overridden to a real-time mode. Enable baked global illumination, use mixed or baked light modes. So if you have some baked lights, you have to leave this on. Otherwise, they'll be treated as real time. So we don't want that. We don't want to. We don't want these point lights to light our scene. So as you see here, if I turn on the the sun again, there's a mixture of light maps here. There's the sun projecting real time GI. There's a dynamic object being lit by quote unquote your lights, your light maps. They're not really, but you know, the effect is as if they are being lit by them. Now, I'm gonna quickly show you the other demo scene here. And what I did was I separated the scene into two groups, uh, the objects group and the walls group. So I ended up having one light map for the walls and one light map for the objects. So I can have much more resolution for the walls since they cover a large part of the screen. Uh, a great thing about having custom light maps is that you can you can bake whatever you want. You can choose whatever resolution you want for the for the light maps. And if you want, like, okay, I I want only this wall here to have a light map of a huge resolution. You can do that. It, it's pretty flexible this way. Of course, you'll, you'll have more files. Your build is going to be bigger, but you have uh, much more control. Let me show you the lighting configurations here. I baked some. I baked the skylight, and I have this lamp here at the corner. Turn it on. I'm going to turn on the light here at the dining table. I'm going to turn down the skylight. And you see, it's a completely, it's a completely different scene. I'll turn on the ceiling lights. Now this is an interior scene, a nighttime, a nighttime scene. Let's go back to the day. Turning on the day, turning on the skylight. Turn down the interior lights. Turn on the sun. Perhaps make this a little bit of a an afternoon lighting. Put the sun here. Down in the sky. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and on the next one, I'm going to talk about the glass features of the Standard Plus shader. See you there.